Now we're going to hear from Dave Barr, the President and CEO of American Road and Transportation Builders Association. Mr. Barr, uh, please proceed with your statement and welcome. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Capito, and members of the committee. Thank you for providing the American Road and Transportation Builders Association an opportunity to take part in this timely discussion. In 2015, then Memphis, Tennessee Mayor A.C. Wharton called the interchange at Interstate 55 and Crump Avenue malfunction junction. And a state transportation official referred to the area as the worst interstate that we have in the state of Tennessee. Fast forward to 2022, a $141 million project broke ground this summer to enhance safety and mobility for individuals in the affected region. The I-55 Crump Interchange is one of the 29,000 infrastructure improvements moving forward in every congressional district this year with highway and bridge formula funds provided by the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, or bipartisan infrastructure law. <laughs> the U.S. Department of Transportation has released another 192 discretionary grants with more 2022 awards on the way. Though each project has a unique story of need and solution, they are all tangible illustrations of the impacts underway from the leadership of this committee in delivering generational investments through a multi-year surface transportation program reauthorization. On behalf of all ARPA members, thank you. To put the 29,000 state-led projects in perspective, Highway Formula Fund supported 2,500 more safety, mobility, and infrastructure improvements in 2022 than in the previous year. To be clear, we are seeing, what we are seeing is more than just an increase in the quantity, but also an enhanced ability for states to tackle large-scale projects with the resources and confidence provided by your legislation. As an example, the number of $100 million plus projects increased from 18 in 11 states last year to 24 in 14 states this year. This data makes a pivotal point. The IIJA's highway and bridge investments are working as intended. We have provided each of you with a fact sheet to help you see the specific ways your constituents are benefiting from the first year of the law's highway and bridge investments. Um, Mr. Chairman, as powerful as the IIJA has been, there is no denying the elephant in the room. Inflation has reduced the purchasing power of every American household, and it is having the same effect on federal, state, and local efforts to deliver or to advance you know, transportation infrastructure improvements. The impacts of inflation, however, vary by state and project type. Some regions have experienced material prices as high as 40%, and yet bids in other areas are coming in below expected costs. While inflation is clearly diluting the initial investments from the bipartisan infrastructure law, it is also clear that this situation would have been dramatically worse if Congress had opted for another short-term flat-funded extension of the surface transportation programs. Another part of the IIJA story relates to regulatory requirements that influence how much projects cost and how long they will take to complete. The infrastructure law includes common sense reforms to the environmental review and approval process that once implemented have the potential to reduce project costs and speed their benefits. Conversely, well-intended re new requirements such as the expansion of Buy America to materials or to construction materials, if not pursued with stakeholder input and a clear eye on market realities, could have the opposite outcome. While I'm pleased to report on the progress of the IIJ's highway and bridge investments, I must also emphasize that this is year one of a five-year commitment. The history of previous long-term reauthorizations indicate these results will escalate substantially in the subsequent years. And Mr. Chairman, before I wrap up, I just want to take a moment to uh, thank Senator Inhofe for his you know, leadership role on this committee for the three reauthorizations of the highway and bridge program that led up to the bipartisan infrastructure law and wish you well in your next adventure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you again for allowing me to participate in today's hearing and I look forward to your questions.